Welcome to a new vlog. Today I'm going to show you how to set up your own GPS tracking server on a Raspberry Pi. It doesn't have to be a Raspberry Pi because the software that we're going to be using, the uh, tracking server, is available for Windows and Linux as well. So you could host this on your Windows machine or in a virtual machine, in a cloud service, it's up to you. But in this video I'm going to do it on the Raspberry Pi 4. The idea started a couple of videos back in Vollog 272 when I got this uh, GPS tracker disguised into a uh, general purpose automotive relay. In theory this should come with free online tracking service on some Chinese hosted server but I wasn't able to connect to that server and so I thought why not set up my own server and try to pair it with this tracker. So if you want to learn more about this tracker check out Vollog 272 linked on screen right now and then come back to watch this video to learn how to set up your own server. This video is sponsored by JLCPCB.com, a professional PCB supplier who can offer 24 hours turnaround time for prototype PCBs for just $2. You also have a selection of solder mask colors with no extra cost and affordable laser cut stencils so it's definitely worth checking them out. I'm going to start with a fresh install of Raspbian. I grabbed the latest release on Raspbian Buster Lite from the official website and prepared an SD card with this image using Balena Etcher. This should be fairly simple to do, it's just the usual way of setting up a Raspberry Pi. After Balena Etcher finished the job, I went on to the boot partition on the SD card and created an empty file called SSH with no extension. This is to enable the SSH server on the Raspberry Pi because it's disabled by default. When finished, insert the SD card into your Raspberry Pi, connect it to the network and apply power. Next step is to set up the tracking server. The name of the software is Trackar and here is their website. We're going to be using the Linux ARM release because the Raspberry Pi runs on an ARM processor. Just save this link as we'll be using it later. I'm using PuTTY here to connect to my Raspberry Pi via SSH on the local network with default username and password which I advise you to change immediately for security purposes. All of the commands that I'm gonna run next are going to be placed in the description below the video so you can copy and paste them. We're gonna start by creating a new directory and changing to its location. Next we use vget to download the ARM release of Trakar. This should take a while as the package is uh, pretty big. Next we unzip and then delete the downloaded archive because we don't need it anymore. Now we can run the installer which will take care of everything. And finally we can start the service using the system control command. There will be no confirmation message printed and you need to wait maybe 20 to 30 seconds until the server is online. Next, open a browser on the same network with your Raspberry Pi and try to connect to the server using the IP address of the Raspberry Pi and port 8082. You should be greeted with the web interface of Trakar. The default username and password is admin. Once again, I advise you to change this immediately. The service will automatically start on boot, so it's not required to perform any other steps. At this point, your server is ready. Now your Raspberry Pi is likely sitting behind the router or firewall so you will need to forward a port so an external device like the GPS tracker can connect to our newly created server which sits behind the router. In the case of the Relay GPS tracker that I have it's using port 5013 but this might vary if you have a different device. This port is critical and you will need to find out which port your tracker is using to establish a connection. I'm using a TP-Link router here, so I'm just going to forward port 5013 to the local IP address of the Raspberry Pi server. Next, just to make sure everything is running ok, let's check if the port is reachable from the outside world using canyouseeme.org. And in our case, the port forwarding was set up correctly, the server is reachable on port 5013 with the external IP address. Make a note of the external IP address as we'll need that in a moment to set up the GPS tracker and don't bother checking this IP address because I'm on a dynamic uh, IP address allocation service and this will be already changed when the video is posted. Next we can add our GPS tracker in the web interface of Trakar. On the left side I click add choose a name for your device and fill in the 10 digit identifier which is the label on the side of your tracker case. 
the newly created device will be shown as offline until the server starts receiving data. The final step is to configure the GPS tracker and these particular commands apply to the tracker that I am using. You might have to use different commands for a different GPS tracker, but the idea is to start by resetting the tracker, next you set your admin number, you then configure the APN settings for your network operator, you set the external IP address we saved earlier and the port 5013, next we set the upload frequency in seconds and enable the GPRS connection. Now going back to the Trakar web interface, status should switch to online and we should start seeing data coming in from our device. The server is very versatile, you can track multiple units, you can configure various alarms, geofences, and by default it even reads the alarm status of our tracker without any extra configuration. But if your tracker happens to have some extra fields that it sends to the server, you can configure the server to read those and present them in the interface. If you are having trouble with this whole setup process, I'll give you a few hints to check while troubleshooting. First of all, this tracker will only work with 2G networks, so make sure your network operator is supporting 2G. The SIM card must not have a pin lock enabled because the tracker is not able to bypass that. The SIM card must have data services enabled and enough credit to perform those operations on the network. Now regarding the server, it is very important to get the port forwarding right and use the correct external IP address because otherwise your device will be pointing uh, to the incorrect server. It's also very important to get the correct port for your particular tracking device and Trakar website has some great info on this so make sure you check their documentation and forums. I'm pretty happy with the, how this turned out. The server is super easy to set up and use. Best of all, it's free and open source. I might try a different setup later on, maybe uh, using a cloud service, because that would likely provide better uptime than what I can get at home with a Raspberry Pi. But the setup process should be fairly similar. I hope this video was useful. Don't forget you can support the channel on Patreon, where every dollar counts. If not, at least hit the thumbs up button and let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time with a new video.